Okay, so let's talk about a different type of nucleophilic addition to a carbonyl. This is a subject called conjugate additions. So I want to remind you of what we've been talking about all along, which is that if you're dealing with a carbonyl, you can think of its reactivity in terms of this resonance form, where we put positive charge at the carbon, negative charge at the oxygen, and of course then that um, explains why we are uh, doing nucleophilic attack um, at the carbon of the carbonyl. All right, so that's the reactivity pattern we become used to. Now imagine a scenario where we've got a carbonyl that's attached to an alkene. Right? So a carbonyl and then right next to it is an alkene. Um, so what we call these are alpha, alpha, beta, unsaturated carbonyls okay and alpha is just the alpha and beta they're just the greek letters um, and so here's your carbonyl and then one carbon away is alpha two carbons away is beta three carbons would be gamma etc etc um, and so in this case it's just describing alpha and beta are just describing the positions in which we've removed hyd hydrogens formally to make the alkene so it's an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl and this is a, a special functionality because if we think about the, the resonance form for this type of, of carbonyl, right, we could absolutely draw this resonance form just like we did above, right? So we, we might expect that we get nucleophilic attack at that carbon, but now there's another resonance form, right, with, because of that conjugated um, alkene that we could draw in this way. Right? So we'll have still O minus, but now we'll have the positive charge down at this carbon. Okay, down there. And so what that means is that if we think about the reactivity pattern of the alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl, we sort of expect now delta positive charge at that carbon and at that carbon. So we have the potential now to, to react with nucleophiles at two different places. Um, and that, that is absolutely um, how, these, how these things uh, react. So just to reiterate that, um, if, we, if we have this type of situation, um, we might expect that um, a nucleophile could either add to that carbon or alternatively, it could add to that carbon. So the products that we uh, might potentially get are, are sort of the, the intermediates, sorry, um, from this attack would be this um, addition and now this, this is called a 1-2 addition. And why is it a 1-2? Well, um, it's always 1. The 1 refers to the oxygen. And, and the reason is, is because there's a, there's a counter ion here. So in this case, it would be a, a metal. Or if it, was, you know, if it was a protonated nucleophile, it would be H plus or whatever. And so that will technically go and associate with that O minus, right? So that's the 1 position. Um, and then the two position is right there. So if we're counting one, two, right? So that's a one, two addition. Uh, and, but, or the alternative here is that we can get to um, attack at that, that uh, beta position. So like this, and this would be our intermediate, right? So we would push those electrons up um, and we get to this type of intermediate. And now this is called a 1 4 addition 1 2 or 1 4 and again the reason is because we will have whatever whatever counterpart here at the 1 position so that's still 1 this would be 2 and now we've got 3 and then we've got 4 so we're describing uh, formally the addition of nucleophile M or nucleophile H across that alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl and describing the positional selectivity. Now what happens in the 1,4 addition um, is that this will uh, typically, typically you will protonate this at the end of the day. Um, so what, how does that work? Well, we could protonate on the oxygen. We could protonate there. Um, but what, what actually happens um, at the end of the day is that we will actually protonate at the carbon. And so this product at the end of the day is going to be where we get the carbonyl back. Okay. So there's 
there's our addition, and so we have our proton there. So it actually looks like it's formally a 4-3 addition, okay? Or a 3-4, I guess you would say. But it, it's, no one ever says 3-4, okay? It's a 1-4 addition. Uh, that's what we call this process, even though at the end of the day, we get a nucleophile at the beta position along with the carbonyl, okay? So 1-4 addition, or sometimes um, this will be called a conjugate addition, conjugate addition, because instead of adding directly to the carbonyl, we're adding to a, something that is conjugated to the carbonyl. So both of those terms um, are, are in use, and, and you might hear me use uh, either of them. Okay. So what's an example of this? Well, uh, one simple example that, uh, that works you know, pretty, pretty straightforwardly is if we treat an alpha beta unsaturated amine with, uh, say, methylamine, very simple amine, um, this will actually add in a conjugate fashion. Right? It'll do a conjugate addition or a 1,4 addition to the, to the ketone, and we'll actually get methylamine at that beta position. Right? So we just did a, a beta addition of the nitrogen to that uh, unsaturated carbonyl. Okay? So you say, well, this is actually a stable product. And you say, well, why don't we form a, an imine or an aminium ion? Um, and in theory, you could and you might, um, but those actually aren't stable. So if you just work this up with water, you're just going to hydrolyze the imine, and this will be the stable product that comes out. So the conjugate addition of the means is, is actually stable. But much more useful than that, uh, than the addition of, of nitrogen, is actually um, the addition of, of carbon nucleophiles. Okay, So uh, we want to add organo metal species to alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl. So this is actually a really useful process. So <clears throat> imagine here we have some alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl. Now it turns out that the uh, specific organo metal species that you pick is going to dictate the selectivity that you get for 1,2 versus 1,4 addition, right? So we've learned about several organo metals. So we've learned about alkyl lithiums um, and these by virtue of the nature of that lithium counter ion, will do um, pretty pretty high selectivity uh, additions in a, in a one two fashion. So I'm I'm assuming pro, uh, proton workup in all of these, so we get neutral products. So these go to give one two additions with pretty high selectivity. On the other hand, if we go in with an alkyl Grignard, okay, what do we get? Well, we actually get a kind of an annoying mixture. So we will get some 1-2 selectivity um, and we will get 1-4 selectivity. Okay. Uh, and that's, that's not good. We definitely don't want mixtures uh, in general in inorganic chemistry. We'd like to be selective. So what are we going to do? Um, alkyl lithium gets us 1-2, but what if we need the 1-4? Um, what do we have at our disposal? Um, and what we have is um, cuprates. Okay, cuprates are very selective for 1,4. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take an alkyl bromide, we're going to treat it with lithium metal, and that will give us an alkyl lithium. Okay, but then we're going to take two equivalents of the alkyl lithium, we're going to treat it uh, with or add it to copper 1 iodide, right, copper iodide, and that's going to give us this cuprate. Okay. So it's the, the lithium and, the, and two organos are attached to the, the copper. And I think you might have learned about this last semester, but if not, this is called a Gilman reagent. Gilman reagent, okay? And so this is a cuprate, and what this has is the potential to, to basically add one of these R groups um, to a carbonyl, okay? So it, it's important to keep in mind that, that you can now get to a Gilman reagent from an alkyl halide, okay? But if we now treat um, an un alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl with the Gilman reagent, whatever it's going to be, so R2 copper lithium, um, we will get to the product, sorry, where we've done a very highly selective 1,4 uh, addition. So we get the 1,4 product, and that's, that's really, really useful. Um, to, to be able to do that with high selectivity, okay? So, uh, let me just point out, because this probably will be useful to us um, in the future, um, what the intermediate is here. And that is that we, we have added 
the uh, the the uh, organo species in that conjugate fashion, and we get this as an intermediate, right? So the counter ion here is going to be, um, you know, whatever whatever metal species is left over there, um, you know, essentially essentially a lithium. Um, but so we've done the one four addition. This is the intermediate. Okay, uh, this is something that's called an enolate. En enolate. That's terrible. Enolate. Okay, it's a function. Uh, yeah, functionality we're going to learn about in detail um, coming up really soon. Um, but this is something that potentially can do other chemistry. Um, for right now, all we're going to do is work at, up with uh, with acid in the way that I said before. And so we're just going to protonate at the carbon and get the carbon yield back. So, okay, that's conjugate additions. We're going to learn more about conjugate additions um, in, in future lectures. But for now, we have a way to add groups uh, to the beta position of alpha beta unsaturated carbonyls.